George, the idea that carbon dioxide uh, is, is a carcinogen that is harmful to our environment is almost comical. We hear a lot of rationales from deniers as to why we shouldn't worry about carbon dioxide. But this was a new one to me. The good news for Representative Boehner is CO2 does not cause cancer. What actually worries us about the CO2 molecule is its ability to absorb heat radiation from the planet's surface and re-radiate it back to us. This is the greenhouse effect. And we like the greenhouse effect because it moderates the temperature of the planet. But we're concerned as we add more and more CO2 to the mix that we're beginning to change the balance that has been in effect during the time humans have evolved on this planet. One of the most commonly heard denier canards is that man doesn't produce enough CO2 to matter. Humans produce a um, small fraction in the single digits percentage-wise of the CO2 that is produced in the atmosphere. Volcanoes produce more CO2 each year than all the factories and cars and planes and other sources of man-made carbon dioxide put together. When you hear a denier say this, you know you're dealing with someone who really doesn't do a lot of thinking on their own. How do we get reliable information on geological processes? I have an idea. Let's Google the U.S. Geological Survey. And sure enough, the relevant page pops right up. And here it is. Volcanic gases and their effects. And scrolling down, we can find the precise reference. Human activities release more than 130 times the amount of CO2 emitted by volcanoes, the equivalent of more than 8,000 additional volcanoes like Kilauea. So the data show it. Human beings have actually become a geological influence on the planet, with an impact that rivals nature's most powerful forces. You mean, they lied to me? Of course they did. Of course they did. But Representative Boehner also mentions another popular climate denial crock. Every time we exhale, we exhale carbon dioxide. Now I feel terrible. Am I making global warming worse just by breathing? We all learned in science class that animals like ourselves in our normal respiration exhale carbon dioxide. And as we also learned, that CO2 is taken up by plants, which use and store the carbon and release more fresh oxygen. It's a beautiful example of the interrelationship of natural things. We also learned in grade school that carbon stored by plants is the source of the fossil fuels we use today. Hundreds of meters below the surface, pressure and heat combine to alter the buried plant material into coal, while the surrounding mud and sand are changed into shales and sandstones. That stored carbon has been sequestered out of the atmosphere for millions of years. Meanwhile, animals and plants have recycled the atmospheric carbon, maintaining a rough balance that changes only very slowly over time. Since the Industrial Revolution, human beings have begun to shift that balance. First, by deforesting large areas for our use, we have released plant carbon stores into the air. Then, digging into the earth, we've found carbon stocks that have been completely separate from the atmosphere for eons, and which took hundreds of millions of years for nature to store up, and injected them into the atmosphere in the geological blink of an eye. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, CO2 levels have risen from about 270 parts per million to almost 390 parts per million. Mankind has never experienced a planet with greater than 300 parts per million CO2 until the last 100 years, and it could go much, much higher. Changes of this magnitude usually have taken place over millions or even hundreds of millions of years. When we find evidence of these kind of changes taking place more quickly in the fossil record, 
we usually find evidence of catastrophic extinction events where large numbers of species have disappeared forever. A large and growing body of peer-reviewed scientific studies are now associating some of the major extinction events of the past with greenhouse warming. The UK Royal Society recently published a landmark study making the connection between global warming and mass extinctions going back 520 million years. In the past, greenhouse events have been caused by cataclysmic continent-sized volcanic eruptions. In our time, the geological force is us. Moreover, the future predicted temperatures are within the range of the warmest greenhouse phases that are associated with mass extinction events identified in the fossil record. It's strange to think that our children may not know the biological diversity that all of us have grown up with and thought of as a birthright. There's still time to change the course we're on and ensure that the next thousand generations of human beings can still live on a biologically diverse planet. There's lots more to say about CO2 and its effects. I hope you'll keep coming back for more videos where we'll be dissecting other denialist myths and giving you the real story on the most important issue of our time. Thanks for listening.